in concert. In 1983 or four, me and my buddies got together. The tickets were either 200 or 250. We went over to Radio City, I think. And uh, listen, he was old. You know, he was fucking up the lyrics and shit. You know, but it's like Rudy Sarzo was somebody. He sat across from you. I saw a legend. I saw somebody. You know, I grew. I, I went to school. I grew. I grew up in North Bergen, New Jersey, but North Bergen was like where the upper class Italians went. That went to Hoboken first. Mm-hmm. They went to Hoboken first, and one day, you're like, you know what? I got a job in the union. I'm making eighteen fifty two an hour. I'm moving up to North Bergen. I'm gonna get a nice house. Yeah. You know, it's like the joke you talk about your dad with the school district. There was no school district. They just had a nice fucking house. I got a good deal on it. Yeah, uh, and all these Italians moved up. So. Growing up, when I first moved to North Bergen, I would hear a lot of Sinatra stories. I used to go to the Ascalese's house. They dropped tons of Sinatra stories, the Holloways. They went to high school when that was going on. They would go to the dances, you know what I'm saying? I remember one day, we were at Mike Ascalese's house, my friend, and we were sitting down eating, and she's telling the story about one night when her and Vinny first met, and they went to the Saints at Eagle Hall, you know, and that Sinatra came in. No, she goes, do you know who came in that night? And one of the guys is eating. He goes, Melly Mel. <laughs> and she's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know, Francis Albert walked in. You know, when they were at dances like that, you know, he would go shoot movies. Yeah. But then he would go back to Hoboken and just go to a high school dance, take a microphone and sing. Like all those stories. And then yeah. you come here and you hear how he stuck up for fucking black people. You know, he, he went to... Uh, the restaurant one night, and the guy dropped the, the Mexican busboy, dropped a glass of glasses, a tray of glasses, and the, the owner was ridiculing him, some fucking Gentile on Sunset, and Sinatra got up and said, listen, man, how much for the fucking glasses? Here's 50 bucks for the glasses. Next time I come here, that motherfucker better be working here. You know, like he stuck up for the little guy, you know, so uh, that's what I grew up listening to, you know. So you listen to all these stories, and when you're a kid, you put Sinatra on, and you're like, should I shoot myself now or later? You know, you don't get it. Yeah. You don't get it. But And then he, when you do get it, he's got 90 fucking albums. He used to just sing about shit, like shoes. I love my shoes. He would, you know what I'm saying? And he, how many cities did he go to? He loved L.A. L.A. was his lady. New York, New York. Yeah. I think he said Chicago. Yeah. You know, he, he didn't care. Listen, you gotta, you're doing this thing. The people up in Chicago, they appreciate you singing a song. Sing a cancionette about you. Chicago! <laughs> I love the fucking pickles on those dogs. He didn't give a fuck. I know. If you look at his record collection, it was amazing. He's got 90 albums. I'm just exaggerating. Probably but, not. It's probably close to that. Close. He made an album like every 60 fucking days, you know, smoking a cigarette at that little building right there. On the... Do you think it's ever going to come back, that, that whole vibe suits toxes just a class vibe or is it gone well i'm gonna answer what you live with every day these people are fucking animals just because you can't put a silk hat on a fucking pig you yeah understand but why, what happened where did it where did it fall off the tracks i mean just coming over here now i'm looking around as, as i'm driving and it's it's it looks like everybody's irregular and no one's like normal anymore. What happened, Joey? I, uh, Where are we going with this thing? When we when we took that flight in Atlanta, I felt really guilty because I was sitting there high on the Chiba Chew and Sebastian <laughs> sitting behind me. And I'm thinking to myself, he's looking at me going, Joey's got a fucking t-shirt on. First of all, I bought it at the Fat Man store. It was one of those uh, expensive t-shirts with the little fucking thing over here. That's number one. Number two. I was telling Lee yesterday, I remember a time when, when you flew, you had to wear a suit. When I was 10 and I flew, my mother would take me to New York and yeah. custom tailor me a suit to fly with. Women look nice. You know, Sebastian, listen, man, I don't, I'm not saying nothing bad about you. I love you like a brother. When you did that whole thing about slippers, it hit home because I don't ever want to see a men's foot. I don't want to see some ladies' feet. Some ladies' feet, I'll suck them and jerk them. I love them. But there's some, the other day I saw a lady with a foot ten like this with an ankle, and I felt like going up to the husband, going, "You let her out of the house with those watakas on her fucking feet? You got shoes on, you know? Men with those? I see these assholes at the airport with slippers and and c- c- custom shorts, c- bottom shorts, and I look at these motherfuckers and I feel bad for them. You filthy motherfucker! You didn't even wash your ass for breakfast. You just left the house with those filthy feet. And what happens if the plane goes down and we got to run for it? 
You're gonna be bad. You're gonna lose a fucking slip. What if you're on the 101 and fucking there's a car accident or earthquake? You gotta run the 101 with a broken fucking slipper like Tarzan <laughs> because you wanna be Johnny Cool and leave the house with a fucking slipper on. I wouldn't put a slipper on this fucking dead foot if you paid me. You understand? I got those fungi toenails. I don't even want them out. At the airport, I saw a dude that had one of those, you know those eagle beaks? That's what his toe looked like. It went out and underneath. I was trying to charge my phone. I had to pull the thing. I got sick. I had to walk away with slippers. <laughs> Put fucking shoes on. I mean, we have broken down. We have become filthy. We have, people think because they have $3, they have class. I grew up with people that had nothing. Nothing. Irish kids that had nothing. The O'Neills. But they had class. They had dignity. They had something to them. Even if you had a hand down me to close, you washed them, you spray painted, you took that fucking thing from the carpet and you filled in the hole on your t-shirt. But these people wouldn't know. I, I have five or six suits in the, in the thing that I look at and go, I threw money away. Because if you wear a nice suit in this town, you're overdressed. And you don't know why you're even wearing it because these fucking animals dress like, you know, they just look at each other and dress the same. It's nationwide. Nationwide. This nationwide. Is nationwide. Nationwide. And uh, the color coordinations. Have you seen the color coordinate? Even when I'm on fucking street clothes, I'm color coordinated. I got the white shoes with the jeans with the black shirt. It all goes down. I would never wear a brown fucking shirt with jeans. I would never wear colored socks. That's the first thing you learn in a fucking neighborhood. You got sneakers on. You don't wear colored socks, you fucking jerk off. Because if you step on glass, the ink from the fucking sock goes into your cut, you fucking, you die. You never wear colored socks. That's something this Pepsi fucking Momo generation put together. It's always white socks. And when you wear shoes, no white unless you're a fucking Mormon or you got invited to fucking Hank's barbecue. It's always those party silk socks with the strings on the side. Or wear a full cotton but wear a black sock. The sock has to match the fucking color. If you got brown on, you got to have tan, tan fucking socks, Sebastian. That's it. This is this is the wardrobe. <laughs> if you have a shirt <laughs> with lines on it, you cannot wear a fucking tie with vertical designs. You become the Twilight Zone. You stupid motherfucker. You're trying to sell insurance, not confuse people. So if you have a shirt with fucking design, uh, a tie with designs, the shirt has to be a flat fucking color. You fucking morons. You can't mix lines with fucking designs so if you have a, a shirt with lines the tie has to be a flat fucking color they don't even know these things their fathers never told them this is like an upbringing i'm thing. sorry I that, get that's, it's all right it's all right you... i'm sorry it's... i get emotional because i look at these animals too sebastian i live in hell too <laughs> i'm trying to think of the line it's like it's it's a flat color tie go, go fuck your mother and yeah no 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 it's uh you know it's we live in a nation women I look at some women that are just gorgeous. I look at women that don't have a chance in hell, but because their toes are done and their heels are fucking manicured. And, and I don't care if they're fat, but they're clean. You see these women that they let themselves go with a, t a, par a tattoo of a parrot on your calf. Yeah. Why am I looking at that disgusting fucking thing? When I see ink on your leg, I think that when you're sleeping, the ink goes sideways and it goes into your pussy. <laughs> and it makes it fucking smell weird. I mean, I don't know, but these are the thoughts you get. You like the spaghetti with the ink from the squid. Oh, God. How there, nice is there's that? There's a place in Santa Monica. I, I, I can't find it out here. Here you go. I got the idea for you. Next time you roll off this weekend, stop this shit. You don't need to go to the store on Saturday. Take Mama, do Friday night, and take Mama and get in the car two hours to Santa Barbara. Stay at the hotel on the beach in Santa Barbara. We were just there. The last Italian restaurant on the strip. You go in there. They have a lasagna with a meatball on the top, but they have the spaghetti with the calamari and count it. Really? I gotta go. I gotta go all the way to Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara, but it's worth it because your yeah. wife will have the lasagna with the meatball, the wine. <clears throat> Everybody's fucking happy, mm. tremendous. They have a salad with uh, escarole and beans. Then this is nice. The bread's a little fucked up, but they try. It's not like going to fucking Michelli's where they give you a popping fresh dough. I can't do it. I can't do it. Give me the tab. I can't do it. Maybe next time. Maybe I'll come with somebody that's a Gentile that'll appreciate this shit. I can't do it either. All right. Santa Barbara it is then. Santa I'm Barbara. Looking for a but I told egg. Rogan, and he said there's a place in Santa Bar in Santa Monica. So we got to ask Joe. Joe says he goes down there once a month on the out. If he's down there, he goes to get the ink Okay. down there. So I just don't know where. You ever have that? No, I've never tried. Oh, my God. You know, used to make Cubans make a broken calamari. 
So they use, instead of the pasta, they mm. use white rice with the ink. Oh, really? So the ink is like, the rice is like a bluish black. Is it salty? Black. What does it taste like? It just, I can't even describe yeah, what it. Yeah, what is the taste of it? I can't even, it's, 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 it's a fishy. It's a fishy, salty, but nice. It's, okay. it's something different, you know? It's really I've something I've never even nice. seen it on a menu. I don't... Listen, you're going to see that in old Italian <clears throat> neighborhoods in Boston. You're going to see that in Cleveland, old Italian neighborhoods. Those older neighborhoods, Chicago, you definitely see it on a menu somewhere. Yeah. You know, there's somebody who does it, some old older guy, you know, that'll take care of that. I have, like I said, I used to have it in my house growing up. Really? My father, my stepfather, not he, the spaghetti. He, he, had, right. he had ink sauce and. Do you get the, the squid with the. I don't know. I didn't even ask. You know, I don't even like touching meat. I just got home. My wife was making a, a, a hamburger. When I was making a, a protein shake, I love meat, but I don't like touching it. Oh, I don't want to see it in this fucking. I, I could marinate the shit out of food. I could cook it. I just, it's not my world. I don't like to see chicken raw. Whenever I see chicken raw, that's it. I'm done. I really? Got, yeah, chicken cutlets. I like Italian chicken cutlets with the breaded, yeah. deep fried in olive oil. You put can save those for the morning. You put wow. some salt and pepper, a little ketchup in the morning. This fucking guy was ketchup. so high last night. Oh, in the morning, on no. chicken cutlet though, breaded. Okay. A breaded chicken cutlet, a little ketchup, salt and pepper on a fork, cold out of the refrigerator. When I was a kid and my mom died, those kids used to bring me three or four chicken cutlets, leftovers in aluminum foil in the morning for breakfast that their parents would make uh, in I high school. I never, I never ketchup on the on the a chicken cutlet. Okay, oh, I'm not heard. Italian, so I can't. Oh my god, I'm not an say Italian it, chicken yeah. cutlet. Not Italian, not an <clears throat> Italian. Uh, what you like, Parmesan. No, 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 not, not chicken parmesan. Yeah, no. A, Just a, a regular cutlet. chicken cutlet breaded. Yeah. I always get like two. If, I'm, if I go to your house, I'll get two of them. Let's say your mother dips them in uh, flour, and then they yeah. dip them in the Italian bread. Comes. Now people think they're fancy with the panko. Take that panko and shove it up your ass. I want fucking uh, breadcrumb. Breadcrumb. Yeah. What is it? Who's the company? Progresso. <laughs> That's it. I don't want nothing else. You show up with something else, you're insulting my fucking intelligence. Two of those, with, and, and sometimes they dip them in the fucking uh, flour. Mm. Delicious. But you know what? You put a little salt and pepper, a little cream corn, a little mashed potato, cranberry juice on the rocks, a little club soda in that motherfucker. Don't get no better than that. Jeez. But the second one, put a little ketchup on it. Right. Just a little bit and taste it with the ketchup. Don't let the ketchup hit the mashed potatoes. Then it's a complete different fucking situation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's great to have you, Sebastian. Are you, oh yeah, yeah. This podcast. By the time I leave here, <laughs> I need some ink. You got ink? Oh no, we'll have to get in the car. It's an hour, mm. ten minutes to Santa. Delicious though. God. Listen, man, I tapped out on Italian food out here. And I'm not even Italian. No, I just got sick and tired. I go to Mazarino's for a quick fix for the lunch special. It's not bad for the ten bucks, but it ends after the spaghetti and meatballs. Like if you get the Fra Diablo, you're gonna run out of there. If you get the the lasagna, is not bad. You know that's what they spend. It's like. Every Chinese isn't good here. Like when I go to uh, sushi in, in Chicago or, or Steak and Shake or one of those pl places by Riddles where it used to be, everything was good. When I go get Chinese here, you know what? The pork fried rice is really good, but everything else sucks. I got to go somewhere else for the egg rolls. That's Mazarino's. Mm. You know, I like spaghetti. I like spaghetti and meat sauce, you know? Yeah. And a couple of meatballs. The sausage was horrendously bad. Bad, huh? But the spaghetti and meatballs, they got that down. So for me, with a little little toss salad on the side, with blue cheese, a couple tomatoes, I'm good. They have a an escarole for happy hour, yeah. nine o'clock escarole with bean soup. I'm scared to even get it because I got might get depressed. So I, I don't even try. I used to go to Whole Foods for the pasta fazool until I found out what my wife was paying for it every fucking Saturday. Oh, that's ridiculous. Twenty six bucks for a container of pasta fazool. Twenty six bucks. I could feel. I could. I could feed a whole fucking village in Napoli with twenty six fucking dollars. It's beans and fucking grass and garlic. You, you know what I'm saying? I told yeah. my wife, we pay how much for that shit? Never again. You got to go on YouTube and learn how to make that shit. <laughs> Fuck everything is on YouTube. Me and my wife really enjoy though going out to nice restaurants. That's one of our our hobbies. We really enjoy a nice meal. And uh, Moats over there on Highland and uh, in Melrose on the corner there, it's uh, Bastianich's place, Batali and Bastianich. And right next to it, they got a place, Cheese Spaca, which does great um, meat plates. And they do a thing, it's like a bread, it's almost like a pizza dough. But the way they make it, it's got a little salt on it, and that's it. And it's in a copper dish that they ship in from, from Italy. And I've never tasted anything like it. It's almost like a flatbread. 
but it's got a salt to it that's out of this world. So I highly recommend that if you if you want a little date night with the what's, wife. What's your favorite places in this area here that you've gone to? I know you go out to eat a lot. And uh, our favorite restaurant, I think, is uh, the, 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 God, so many. For sushi, we like uh, Matsuhitsu on uh, La Cienega. That's a big uh, spot for us. Italian, we like Moza. We like uh, Nobu for sushi is good. Um, Reddo is a Mexican joint on Melrose Avenue. They got a nice patio. We go out there, get a little seafood, some wine. Me and my wife are really into wine, too. We got married up in Napa, so we have a, uh, a, a big, big palate for wine because her parents are totally into wine. So, yeah, that's all we're doing is eating and drinking. Breakfast, do you eat at the house? I make breakfast. Egg whites, you yeah. do the whole thing. And do a little, little uh, breakfast. There's a place I go on uh, Wilshire Boulevard in Hauser called Black Dog Coffee. Yeah, a lot of people go there. Yeah, yeah. Get a, a little uh, little scramble, some uh, turkey sausage and spinach. Jesus and uh, you have a nice little cup of coffee. You read the paper. I still read the paper, by the way. I don't know if anybody else is doing that. I love reading the paper. I, I, just... I, feel, like I'm, I feel like I'm 78 <coughs> years old half of the time. Reading a newspaper, I'm actually sitting down and eating breakfast. Does anybody do this stuff anymore? Yeah, yeah, people yeah? love this shit. <laughs> just don't read the paper. What's lunch at your house? I go out. I'm a Chipotle guy for lunch. Really? I, I'm a, I'm a I'm a creature of habit. Once I find a place, I just keep going back and back and back, and I don't and I don't know on the road. Do you? Try different places, or what do you if do? If it's not walking distance, I'm not getting in the car and driving. So you're the guy just, you you lock yourself in the room, and you don't come out until the show? Half and half. Half and half. I go to the gym. I like to walk around the area where I'm at, but I don't want to get in no cars, Sebastian. No car? No cars. I just don't want to get into the, you know. I like it. I like I rent a car, and I just go around to see what they got. I can't stay in the hotel, I've man. done I'm like you. I've done comedy for 20 years, and I went out as a feature act. And when I was a feature act, I went to museums. I went to ball games. I did all that shit in the yeah, daytime yeah. because the show didn't count on me. Mm -hmm. Didn't count on me. Count on somebody else. All I had to do was 25 minutes. I could drink. Yeah. Now that people are paying for tickets, I, I really can't deter that. I can't go to dinner with Sebastian and get all wound up. And yeah, I got yeah. two shows, and now <laughs> I'm tired because I was going with Sebastian. Yeah. And so I try to... I try to maintain my energy. I got it. Like Saturdays, I like to be on the first flight out Sunday. So that means Saturdays, I take it easy. I take a nap. I go for breakfast. I go for a nice breakfast or walk. I take a nap. I smoke some dope. I get up. I go to the gym. I come back. I write somewhere. I go somewhere, coffee shop. I write. And then I go do the show. But as far as fucking no, no, I love doing jujitsu. And that's the first thing. When I find out the hotel, I see what's close by. If I got to get in the car, I'm very done with cars. Like, I don't want to be involved because it's never just a straight shot. I don't know where the fuck I am. Yeah, I don't know where I am. So now I got to play at 30 feet, make a right turn. If I don't make the right, I end up in Chattanooga. You follow me? I'm retarded. I know me. I know Uncle Joey. You right. follow me? I like going to places where it's very easy. I like Columbus because I got a couple of restaurants right there walking distance. I like anywhere, like I don't go to clubs where there's no civilization. Like I'm too old. I've been doing this for too long. I need yeah. something, bro. I need something. You know, now at the places they have, and it breaks my heart that I go to a place, uh, like a commercial place. Like this week in, in uh, where did I fucking go? In? Grand Rapids. What I, in Grand Rapids, I went to the steak place. And it was menza morte. It wasn't even, the salad was great. The steak was, mm -hmm. you know, but I, it's one of those places like a Ruth Chris. It wasn't Ruth Chris though. It was the other one. I used to love going to places, like when I go to Minneapolis, there's a spot that's a Cuban joint that the lady open, only opens up for breakfast and lunch. I go there, but if it's something I can get here, I'm not doing that. Yeah. I don't go to Houston to eat a cheeseburger, Jack. I go to Houston to tear up that motherfucking Papa Do's and tear up that, you follow me? Oh, yeah. I want to get some alligator, I want to get some barbecue. I'm not waiting on line for an hour, for four hours in Austin. It don't mean that much to me. Yeah. I don't want to send somebody away online. I'm not a Puerto Rican. I'll go somewhere because bad barbecue in, Houston, in in Texas is better than good barbecue in LA. Oh, man. I'm confused here in Los Angeles. This is supposed to be a mecca of food, and I got to pay an arm and a leg to get good fucking food. That's not right. I'm used to places like Chicago 
that I could go to a fucking neighbor. I don't mind driving to a neighbor, but I could still pay $4 for a meatball sandwich. Yeah. A meatball sandwich. And some fat lady with fat under her arms is making it for it's me. It's not out here at all, man. It's no, not out and this here. is what breaks my heart. This is the problem. I, lately, I've, been, I've lost some weight because it's not the diet. It's that I'm to the point where I tell him, if I'm going to go eat pizza from Rev Pizza, I'll pass. Yeah. I'll pass. The best pizza I know right now is Stouffer's French bread. Crisp that motherfucker up and dope it up. That's it. That's it. I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not going to go waste my time. There's a place on Ventura, Chinese, New York style. The egg roll is always bursting at the side. I go up there. I got to eat fucking French style for lamb and young. Delicious. Go up to the green apple before you go home. Get the French style for lamb and young with the white rice, Sebastian. Good. Your asshole will blow up. But that's not <laughs> Chinese food. When I go, when I used to get off the plane in what, not the main airport in Chicago, but the other uh, Midway, one. Midway, ten minutes to Midway. There's twenty places that I don't drop. They show you a restaurant that I'll do, but to go get a, you know, I love like when I worked the house of comedy. In the hotel there, they got a fucking great stew and they got a great, I don't mind that. Mm. But Sebastian, I don't want to drive all over in a town that I don't know. Well, I, I, listen, I don't blame you. You yeah. don't want to get lost. You don't want to take the ride. Oh, my God. But, but to me, it's a little adventure. Adventure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Ari, too. Bit. Ari takes his shirt off, <laughs> walks around with no shirt on. Who does that? <laughs> uh, who does this? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not taking my shirt off. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, to me, I got to get out, man. I got to get out and about. I got to feel the city a little bit. I got to feel the sun. I like feeling the sun. I'm a big sun guy. I, yeah. I love, yeah. I, I'm Cuban. It's in my fucking blood. I come from an island. Have you been there? When I was born. And then oh, you were was, born there? Yeah, three years. I left when I was three, man. Wow. And all I remember, Sebastian, is a fucking ocean. It's the saddest thing. I just remember looking... At an ocean. I remember different things, but I can't verify them in my head. But yeah. I do remember that ocean and that smell. You know, my mom uh, was very influenced by Italian people in Cuba. You know, in Cuba, the pizza standard came with lobster tail. Wow. A lot of people don't know that. Wow. A lot of people don't know that. See, they forget. You got to get those old Cubans that had businesses. And, and, you know, because the people from Chicago that went to Cuba, they wanted the chef from Mazarino's in the south side. Yeah. So Capone would fly that motherfucker down there. You know, the guy's... See, the problem I have with mozza and stuff like that, but I'm an old man. Guess what? Your uh, three cheese arrabbiata, well, I love arrabbiata, but I'm saying that dish they always invent on Penny, when I see that for $42, it just snaps my neck. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's ridiculous. Because I want, I just want a nice... Yeah, I just, just want a plate. just want a plate of oh pasta. God, my pasta with sauce. Yeah, I get you. Two meatballs, a nice sausage, maybe a cheese platter, a <laughs> glass of red wine. Dog, you can't beat that, and you don't get fat on that shit. Yeah, if you sit there with the fucking bread, and then that's again. Listen, there's nothing better than dipping that bread oh, in the sauce. You know, there's nothing better can't than be breaking it. that bread. Fuck gluten. Fuck your mother. Fuck. Uh, well, the gluten swells me up. That's good. I'll take the swelling. Those people in Chicago, they do great in the winter. Over here, you're freezing 60 degrees. Right or wrong? They're freezing at 60 degrees. It's cold, cold. Uh, yeah. But those people in Chicago, they think it warms them up. The fuck? Yeah. Pasta, that that's what that, that pasta fazool. You know, in the winter, what do Italians make? Poor Italians, it's yeah. beans and fucking it's peasant food. It's peasant food. You know, I grew up with these people that they were such Italians. Like they even made like peas and potatoes like um, with pasta. That I, I, uh, that's too primitive for me. Mm -hmm. Those are cave Italians. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Those are Cornio Italians. Cave Italians. Fucking peas and, <laughs> and spaghetti and potatoes on pasta, which isn't bad. Yeah. The potatoes and the peas on pasta isn't fucking bad. Sebastian, I, I went back to the comedy store last August, man, and uh, I really like being there. And I got to tell you something before we start the conversation. I don't like anybody, Sebastian. I know you've known this for years. I know you have your issues also. You're a friendly guy, though. You're one of the first guys at the comedy store that, uh, you know, as a young comedian coming into Los Angeles, this is one of the first guys I, I talked to. You seem very approachable. There's a very... reason to that. There's a reason to that. I have a certain soft spot for Italians, and you look like one of my dearest goombas that would take a bullet. Like, they mm -hmm. don't have that. So as soon as I associated you, I associated you with this kid that he was so good looking, we put him out of his bait, and then we'd mug the fags. <laughs> That's how much I loved him. That's how much I loved him. 
Wasn't he like the kid of the chief of police or something? Oh my god, it was tremendous. I loved him. I don't want to say his name. He's in business now, but uh, he showed me a lot of love when I needed it as a child. He'd mm. bring me into his house, and his mother, his mm. father, always made chili. Like there's some people. That's a dish I love. Mm. Like a good chili with rice, with rice and onions, raw onions. And he would tell him, like, Dad, Coco really loves your chili. So every time the guy, the guy would be driving a police car, and he'd see me go, Coco, come over next Wednesday. I'm making my chili, all right? And he'd just take off. That's He I, I, He was always good to me. His yeah. sister was always good to me. I hung out with his cousins. They had two batches of cousins. Very interesting family because the one side were cops and the other side were gangsters. So they didn't talk. Wow. It, fucking tremendous. But the kids talked. They were all mad because the chief of police's sister was married to the mafia. So, but they were all cousins. I went to school with three of the batches. That's crazy. So he was my friend. So when I saw you, you were very quiet like he was. He was good looking, quiet, but his Italian genes, he was always thinking. He might be looking at you. You were looking like Sebastian. People said, look at Sebastian. He's over in the corner like a mook. Stand there. <laughs> but Sebastian's over there thinking how he's going to take over the fucking world, you fucking jerk off. <laughs> While you're over here talking about that joke you wrote in Memphis last week. Oh, my God. It was tremendous. Sebastian's over there looking at you thinking, this fucking pork chop. You know, and that was uh, Gerard. Gerard was always, so I understood you from day one, the cologne. Uh, you were a very hard worker. I could see that. They were pulling you in one direction, and you would dabble in that direction with those fucking... With the with the Wonder Bread Italians, they would take you, but you were too. Your genes were pulling you. You didn't want no part of it. Yeah. And I always had the utmost respect for you. And over the years, Ari would always tell me, "Fucking Sebastian, killing it." And I would go, "Ari, it doesn't surprise me." When everybody else was yakking, he was in the back taking notes. Those are the scariest people. Not guys like me that talk. The guys that watch and smile at you. That's old Italian shit. Fuck you, <laughs> fuck you, your mother. And then like, yeah, 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 smiling. And then later on, you wake up in the middle of the night to get water, and you got a knife in your fucking neck. <laughs> and the guy's standing there playing the fucking ukulele, singing you Italian songs and shit. That's the mentality. Well, there's a typical Italian that has a that has a characteristic of being a loud guy, being a talker. But and for myself, I was always very shy, very kind of laid back. I didn't like being. I didn't monopolize a conversation. I just kind of sat and listened and nodded. And I, I don't know. I just I thought you'd never learned anything by talking. You, Always. Yeah. So I just kept silent. And, and and when I went to the comedy store, I didn't know what to, how to blend in. Or it just feels like, you know, you feel like a new kid in school, especially when you come out Los Angeles, 1998. I know nobody. Now, where did you come from? I came from Chicago. I was born and raised in Chicago. How many stand-ups did you do in Chicago? I before didn't. You, you never I did, did I did, did once in college. I opened up for the... Uh, the, the national comedian that was coming to the school they had a contest. Who was it? Uh, God, I forget his name. It'll come to me as we as we talk. But uh, funny story, he ended up featuring for me three years ago when I went to Cleveland, and I didn't I didn't tell him that I was the guy who opened up for him eighteen years or fifteen years prior. But it was just a funny funny how the world works. But anyway, I opened up for him. It's a primarily black audience at the at the college and i'm dying I'm sweating up there and i'm dying I'm, I'm the jokes ain't hitting uh and i start hearing sandman sandman i go what the hell is sandman so later on i find out it's what they scream at the apollo when you stink so that was my first introduction in the stand-up comedy and after that i didn't do it and for three years until i moved out to los angeles so i started here uh, from Chicago in 1998, and uh, I took Sandy Shore sandbox class, uh, which, uh, <laughs> not knowing anything about comedy, I start looking in the trade papers. I go, oh, Sandy Shore, who is the daughter of Mitzi Shore, has a class at the comedy store. So light bulb goes off, I'll take the class, and if the daughter likes me, she'll tell the mother I'm in. So the first day... We're in the class, and she says, me and my mother, we don't really get along. And I'm thinking, eh, eh, there goes $450. There goes my plan. But, uh, I mean, say what you want about stand-up comedy class. I know it's got, like, a negative connotation for some people. It helped me for the six months that I was in it just kind of be comfortable going up on stage in front of a, a, a group of people who were doing the same thing. So 
And then after that, I came into the to the comedy store about a year and a half later. I got passed, and uh, that's where I kind of got introduced to you. And uh, like I said, you were very friendly, open. Hey, what's going on? We would we would bullshit in the parking lot, and then you vanished for what? Uh, two thousand seven. Two thousand gone. Didn't see gone. you at uh, forty seven years. Did you leave because why? Or, or what happened? There was reasons. It was, uh, I didn't like the direction it was going. That was number one. And I felt like I had overstayed my welcome. If you were to start at Zanies in Chicago, you start as an MC, mm -hmm. And after about three, three and a half years, you'd feature. And then after five or six years, you'd get really good Sebastian, but you'd have all the local references down. So, you know, a night that they're coming in to see Joe Rogan, you open up for him. And next thing you know, you're rocking in front of Joe Rogan. It's taking Joe Rogan eight minutes to get it together. Well, you got to make a move. So now, what's his name? Uh, Bert comes up to you and he goes, Sebastian, you got a great set. What I'm going to do is headline you on the holidays. So now you buy another year in Chicago. So you headline Christmas, you headline Thanksgiving, you headline the 4th of July. After that, there's nowhere for you to go, Sebastian. Yeah. So that's six, seven year mark. I just wasn't going nowhere. That was one part of it. The other part of it was the whole Tommy thing with Rogan and the whole thing. I just, because uh, Rogan got thrown out of there way before he got thrown out of there. They went on that tour, and that's when the whole plot was getting assembled, and they would come to me. And they go, when your boy came back, uh, he's not going to do 40 minutes. I go, what are you telling me for? Go tell him. It was like I saw the whole thing evolve. Then uh, I got a call from Tommy about Caparulo and fucking Carlos, and then the commercial, the Super Bowl commercial came with Carlos. Third commercial on the Super Bowl. Third commercial. First commercial break of the Super Bowl. Third commercial is Carlos Mencia. I'm watching this going, this is not good. Every comic in L.A. right now, their head's blowing up. And sure enough, two weeks later, Carlos gets into the beef with Joe Rogan. It was just, it was a, a power keg. Yeah. But that commercial, that thing fucking set it off. I just thought that I was overstaying my welcome. I wasn't seeing myself go anywhere. Mm -hmm. I got off the blow. I was trying to just uh, find my way, and that's what happened. Mm. I just didn't want to. Just I just saw the dark side of it. It was just getting too out of control, and I had it had done what it had to do. Yeah, I had overstayed my welcome. You know? So now you return, right? Now, uh, do you feel at home there? Is it something where you're like, yes, is... absolutely. When I see guys like you, it makes me very happy. When I see. Uh, you know, I go down and I see Ari or I see Duncan. I still get, even Kurt Fox has changed a lot. It's great to see him. Mm -hmm. um, I, I feel I'm too old. I feel like when we started and those guys would be up and they'd be creepy. They'd be up there just eyeballing you. And you get there and they come up to you and go, what time is your spot? 12.45. I don't have a spot. And and, and, and I don't want to be that guy. Yeah, yeah. And so... I go down there, I don't want to be talking to girls and sitting in the back and talking about my days there and we did blow with Chewy. That's not for me. Yeah. So uh, tonight I have a 1045 spot. I'll get there at 1025. Yeah, I'll you sit. Do. I want to see you, whoever's in front of me and whoever's behind me and I get out of there. I am not. I don't drink. I don't do anything there. I don't even smoke pot there. Mm. You know, It's a different thing for me. I feel like one of those creepy guys. Remember the guys that used to hang out there? At yeah, night? but you never be that guy. No, 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 no. But the day I don't get spots, there's a day I'm not going to sit there oh, yeah. and ask Sebastian, eh, what time is your spot? 12.10? I wish I was getting spots, man. I used to get six spots a week. No, no, no. listen, it's over. To yeah. go home and play with the kid. And so, no, I feel tremendous there. It's up my game. Yeah. It's really up my game. Uh, it's amazing you think you're a headliner. And like I tell people all the time, I've been doing comedy for 24 years. I've been headlining for maybe eight of those, and I just became a headliner maybe three years ago. Mm. You're a headliner. You're in the top of your game right now. You know, uh, you work hard. You've worked hard. You're one of the guys that blew me away at the comedy store. I, I would come home and wake my wife up and go, I got to tell you the Sebastian joke. And I would fuck it up, hack it up to death, <laughs> but we would die of laughter. And when your special came on, we watched it. We went on Netflix and got the other one. And I've said it here uh, time and time again that I think you're in the top three stand-ups working today. You're, uh, Thank you. Your stories, your deliverance, your anger, you know. And I would hear different bits, but I would try to bump into you to give you a hug, and I would never bump into you. And then my friend from Florida hit me up, Roseanne D'Agostino. Oh, yeah, they've been, to, they've been to now, this. Now, who does she come with when they go? A I bunch of fat chicks from my hometown? <laughs> Tasia and all those fat no, chicks. No, I've never seen her with a large group of people. It's been 
I think one. I think I saw him twice at the show. If we're talking about the same people, and right? Roseanne, it was, it was, real cute girl, Hawaiian looking Italian yeah. girl, and she was with a guy. I think right? skinny Italian guy. But the right. guy, the guy knows you too. Does he? There's another guy. There's a guy that always comes to my shows. That hey, no Joe in South Florida. Yeah, if you yeah. go to South Florida, you're gonna all my high school, the Cubans and the Italians when they got out of the high school, they all go to South Florida. So when you do uh, like today, I called Jimmy Volano. I spoke to him. I told him you were on the show. He's ecstatic. This is uh, kids this I grew is, up with. Yeah, well, this is uh, Fort Lauderdale. Fort area. Lauderdale. Yeah. Okay. This is your crew. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They come to the show, and, uh, and yeah, I think this guy went to high school with you. All of them. All of them. The girl Roseanne shed a locker with me. I'll tell you how skinny I was. I used to put on her gym shorts. Wow. My sophomore year, I, she needed a. Uh, it was me, her, and this girl named Donna Donna Ruba. And Donna Donna Ruba was dating a football player, and they stole a car one night, and the cops just something, and they crashed the fucking car, and they died. So I became tied to a Roseanne Jeez. D'Agostino. But I hung out with her crazy brother. We used to take acid and get a ghetto bus and get on the bus from New York to Seaside Heights and play Highway to Hell. And the bus driver would pull over and say, please, please lower that. So I was tight with her. So she hit me up one day, and she goes, hey, I'm thinking about coming to your show. So I was fucking around. I go, listen, because I know they're all born-again Christians. Oh, are they? Yeah, they're on the Christian side. What happened was Roseanne, <laughs> this other girl, Tasia, that was a hot piece of ass when I was growing up, hot piece of ass. She started dating some wise guy and going to Atlantic City, and one night they got drunk and killed the couple. But he what? went to jail. I, 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 these stories. I'm Can sitting, you believe I'm, this? I'm, I'm sitting here listening Can you believe you. this shit? I, 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 I didn't even grow up remotely close to any of the stories that you tell. It's amazing. Acid on the thing. Someone getting murdered. Most people I, don't. <laughs> you have no fucking idea, Doug. Did you go to high school in Florida? I went to high school in northern New Jersey in a town called North Bergen, New Jersey. You know what bananas is? Yeah. The other way, I'm towards the Lincoln Tunnel. Okay, so I'm next to Hoboken. Where did Florida come in? Oh, everybody from my hometown in North Bergen regroups and goes to Florida. That's the big thing. All those Italians and all those Cubans, they grew up together. So on Roseanne's block alone, on Roseanne's cul-de-sac where she lives, it's Roseanne, that girl Tasia that was married to the wise guy, and then they killed the couple. She got probation and was pregnant. She had a kid. The guy hasn't seen the kid. He's in prison. He came out, Frankie Avella. And then this chick Tritches that I used to fuck around with, <laughs> this little fat fuck. They all live on the same block. Their kids go to school together. Their kids hang out together, bro. It's it's an amazing story. I got them all the way down. I got the Luchis. I got thousands of Italians that I grew up with. The Katamatris. I got they're all down there. Jeez. And then I got a whole bunch of Cuban kids. I did Lamenka. Like I got a bunch of people down there that have contacted me and said, Sebastian's coming to town. We're gonna go down there and say hello. And I go, Yeah, go down there and say hello. Wow. The guys from American Top Team play your fucking CD, one of the guys. Because they came to see Rogan. American Top Team is an MMA team in South Florida. They come to your shows. They just embarrassed to say hello. And I'm like, Why are you embarrassed to say hello? You people bit slap people. Because when I went down there with Rogan, they said, Sebastian's coming in two weeks. We can't wait. Oh, that's fun. That's nice so to we know, cross, man. yeah, we cross, sell. A lot of people, I went to school with the fans of yours. One kid that's a longshoreman. Called me about a year ago, and he asked me a bunch of creepy questions about you. And I go, why? And he goes, my wife and him were watching him. Joey was like, uh, he's one of us. That's what I because you, you, you could fit right into our fucking neighborhood, except the murders and the <laughs> and the acid and the. <laughs> well, it's an immigrant. What people are relating to, I think, is an immigrant upbringing and uh, just the way we grew up. You know, you, you started the the show with the how people dress. That comes from somewhere. That comes from parenting. That comes from, right? No, that comes from a, someone telling you what to do and what not to do. You all right? <laughs> He's looking for his pretzels. I'm looking for my chocolate bonbons. <laughs> Wait, you guys were talking earlier about like if you think it's going to come back, and it has started coming back, but the issue is it's like hipsters. Like A lot of people are having like small restaurants now. And like they're dressing up in suits, but they're like hipsters. So I don't know if like if you if you, if you want them to be doing it, but those are the people that are doing it. I want them to do it from the heart. You could tell. Yeah, you I could tell. tell when a guy is manufactured and when a guy leaves the house. Yeah. When a guy is manufactured, guys like me get upset. I ain't got no problem to get a piece of pussy, but it don't get manufactured. If it takes you ten minutes to put that baseball hat on, you're manufactured. Yeah. 
The follow me looks fake. If the shirt has to be a certain way so they see the tattoo, yeah, it, it doesn't bother me, but you're selling, that's it, we have nothing to talk about. It's too planned. It's gotta be natural. It's gotta be natural. It's amazing how much work it must be. Like I was at the store the other day and this dude had like pressed on fake fingernails. He had like a whole setup and I was just like, you just must spend all your day like just planning it. And all you need to do is eat a piece of salmon and fucking dip some weights on your back. That's it. A little fucking spaghetti, a little meat sauce. You're back. You don't need all that dress up. It ain't fucking Halloween. I dress like a union electrician for a reason. I love it. I love my little union electrician attire. This is it. I, you don't know where I'm coming from. I could be a cop. I could be an electrician. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think that's what it is. It's, it's a familiarity with uh, upbringing. Cuban, Italian, Spanish, Greek. It's all the same thing, really. Do I'm you, in the process of writing a book. I'm sorry, Lee. Oh, no, go, go, go ahead, my brother. Go I was ahead. just going to say, do you still do the uh, Aren't You Embarrassed thing on Instagram? Because that's, that's the best. The I Twitter was just watching Instagram. forever because you would think they would be, but they're just not. They're just totally well, unaware. That that started as a, as a young kid where I just would walk around and in my head go, aren't you embarrassed? I mean, like, <laughs> anything you look at, just their behavior or whatever, and then uh, I didn't know what my role in social media was when it first came out. I looked at it and go, what am I going to do with this? Uh, Twitter. I, I'm not a guy that does, like, funny little quips and whatnot on Pictures Twitter. Yeah, I presidents mean, getting shot. I don't like that shit yeah, either. I, 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 and I'm like, what am I going to do? Um, how am I going to populate the Internet with something that's kind of close to me, my point of view? And anyway, I just started walking around, and then when the uh, you know iPhone started becoming popular with the video and this and that, I would video somebody, whatever, clipping their toenails at the airport or whatnot, and go, "I <laughs> should embarrassed," and just share it online. And uh, you know, now people are kind of sharing their own "Aren't you embarrassed?" moments and whatnot. So it's like I'm like the social police, the behavior police, where. You know, it's in a world you do whatever the hell you want, no consequences. If I'm around, I'm going to shame you into acting properly. So has anybody ever caught you taking a picture of them? No, I'm very discreet with it. But, you know, and another thing, it's this is all in good fun, by the way. I mean, I'm not saying that I don't do any embarrassing things. I ride a scooter, for Christ's sake. So, yeah, I'm embarrassed every once in a while myself. But... You know, I think the people, like, I post something uh, that, like, they brought a dog to the a graduation, you know, and they dressed the dog up, in, in the, and then you get people, well, he's probably a service animal. And it's, a, it's, a, it's comedy. This ain't serious. You know, okay, the dog's dressed up in a graduation outfit. Do people service ever, dog or not, it's funny, no? Do people accuse you of bullying? Like that's yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. get a bullying type of it's not it's not bullying, it's just pointing out the absurdities in life and 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 making light of it. That's that's all it is. And the aren't you embarrassed hashtag is just a uh, a brand that I've created where, you know, if you see something you think, oh, Sebastian would probably not like that type of behavior. Right? That's all. That's all it is. Clipping so, your toenails somewhere in public. Well, the, 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 the toenails, I, listen, I don't know about you, but I see it a lot. I see it more more than I should. People whipping out um, uh, a toenail clipper and clipping their t nails. I've heard it on the plane. I've been on the plane. And t t t t t I go, what? Somebody clip. And then sure enough, you turn around. That guy's clipping his nails. Now, I've never brought a clipper out. I've never had that readily available. That's a conscious choice you got to make. To say, you know what, if I get a chance, I'm going to clip my nails in public today. And sure enough, people uh, are doing it. I don't know. There's just a, there's a, like you say, there's a, there's a set of rules you get growing up as a kid from your parents of how to behave. And I'm looking around and, and, and a lot of people just, they don't have a, a rule book. They have no common sense. No common sense. You, when you fly, you really see how dumb society is. I'm not saying I'm a Phi Beta cap. I've made a thousand mistakes. But when you fly, you see no, the you see stupidity. You see the Gentiles, the gen whitest people in the world. What well, I say, I mean, you're fucking white, dummy. That fucking Chinese lady over there knows where she's going. And you're walking around using logic. No. There's no logic. Follow the fucking arrows. This is a door. 
<laughs> you can't stop at the door and go, wow, look at this airport, because I got fucking the troops coming behind me. Get the fuck out of the way. Yeah. There's just so many things. People that bring food on the planes and, you know, people, I see anybody, like, I, my big thing is leaving the house without a shower. I could tell when you leave the house without a shower. You want to get under my fucking car, I don't care how busy you are in the morning, there's seven minutes. I could take a shower in seven minutes, yeah. guys. I put the hot water on, I'm putting the hot water on, I brush my teeth. Once the shower, I don't give a fuck about a drought, okay? That shower better be hot when I go in it. Fuck you and your fucking drought and your fucking tomatoes. You should have thought of that when you built fucking uh, Water World. <laughs> I go in the shower, I put the fucking shampoo in my head. Why the shampoo in my head is melting the gel and the particles come out of my fat fucking body. I take the loofah. And I put the Irish Spring fucking soap or the other one my wife gets, the blue shit, and I scrub myself down, okay? I get the ball sack, I pick up my feet, I hit my feet just hit in case you pick up particles. Then I take a special loofah and I take that one and I rip my asshole and I take all the fucking butterflies and whatever's around the edge of your ass because that's, you know what I'm saying? So you got a separate asshole f a loofah? Loofah, absolutely. That, that just touches the asshole. That's it. That's it. Why would I infect the rest of the fucking loofahs? Is it like a special shape? Yeah, I'm going to make a special. I cut it. I took a loofah that was fucked up, and I cut it, and I stapled the, <laughs> the handle from the other loofah, and it's small and thin, and I put my fingers right into it, and I scrubbed my asshole so there's no stink. You know, you know how many times I come out of the shower and I scrub my asshole and it's still got that wang to it? I don't want to live like that. I want my asshole to be fresh. Clean. And I'm not even making a joke here. This is the truth. I have a special loofah for my asshole. And for my nutsack combination under here, I don't want that touching my feet or my face. <laughs> that, you know, what comes out of your ass? You're eating that meat. God knows what they put in it. Then the, the residue from the... Yeah, yeah, you, you know. need to clean that so up. So wait, you'll eat an ass, but you won't wash your body with the same loofah that... No, like eating an ass, dog. I'm like a cat, okay? I got to clean his mouth around. I can suck 20 pussies with fucking VD in them and fucking crack hoe pussy. And the next day I'm breathing on you and it smells like Listerine. That's what we got. We're like dogs. <laughs> Our mouths are tremendous. We don't lick ourselves because we're stupid. Nobody fucking did that test yet. If we lick, you ever cut yourself like a, uh, you ever cut yourself and you have a dog lick your wounds? You ever see St. Lazarus? St. Lazarus had leprosy and the dogs were licking his fucking wounds because they could take care of the leprosy. That's why in Cuba you can't touch a dog because of St. Lazarus. You know, we're very, uh, you know. <laughs> we could throw the maluk on you too I don't fuck around I put a maluk on you motherfucker You'll be walking with a limp in seven days bitch. I just don't like putting it out there Because then sometimes it backfires And then I step on a piece of glass Now I'm fucked up You know what I'm saying Maybe the guy's got his own maluk <laughs> All right. is, is, is there a defense mechanism For the uh, malocchio in, in Cuba uh, Like uh, for example uh, Italians they, they, uh, they have a uh, They either have a horn that they wear around What's the What's the horn called? The Coronato? Uh, yeah. And or Hornado. Coronado. It's with a C. I think it's called Hornado. Okay. And then uh, they have this thing, this this little uh, keychain almost with the uh, fingers that they put in the pocket. And then they have a horseshoe that they turn upside down over the door. The door. Mm -hmm. And that's supposed to keep all the Malloy the away. Malloy right. Is there anything in the Cuban culture we that... We go deeper with the Sicilians. The Sicilians are the ones that get creepy on you. They're the ones that... Well, I'm half Sicilian. Right, so they're the ones that when you cook a fish, they take the eye. The eye of that Sicilian culture is very, very elojo. That's the fucking whole thing, the eye. So they put a maloik back on you. <laughs> they put a maloik back on you with the eye of the fish. They put, like, garlic in there, some tomatoes and some peppers, and you're done. They put the... You know, Mr. Barone used to have stories that... He, he hated the Yankees so much growing up that him and his father would sit with the horns. And every time Reggie Jackson, he would tell this story. He goes, every time Reggie Jackson would slide, we put the maloik on him to break an ankle. Break an ankle, you fucking never worked. But <laughs> fucking hilarious. Well, the me. Jews, they spit. Don't they do not they do like a spitting? Um, are you Jewish? Yeah. We got these, uh, uh, my, my um, brother-in-law is Israeli. Okay. And if they say anything like, like good... They don't want to like curse it, so they'll spit. I don't after know that they, one. No, I don't. I, I don't doubt it, especially over there. There's a lot of like superstitions and stuff like that. My mother would spit on herself whenever somebody said cancer. So if somebody was in a conversation, they go cancer. My mother would go, "Don't say that." And she'd spit on herself and keep walking. Why? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh man. Uh, it's uh. <laughs> It, it was very interesting to me when I moved to North Bergen. I thought that I really knew people when I moved to North Bergen. Uh, 
I had a Sicilian family I was very friends with. They were blonde hair and blue eyes. They were from the bottom. Mr. Barone used to goof on them. What type of Sicilians are you? Yeah, well, I don't blonde know. hair and blue eyes. What are you, from the bottom of the shoe? What happened to you people? He, one of the kids I grew up with died, but their parents, their mother's still alive. Everybody's croaked. The son, the only one's alive that the daughter. You know how I got in contact with him? I was doing Lycus. The daughter was out here going to law school. And she heard it, and she called me on Lycus. Wow. And we reconnected. And I learned a lot from her family. And uh, they would tell me stories about Sicily's just like you, but it's an island, bro. You know, but the, the fame story they told me was like in 16-something when they, uh, when they uh, the, the Moors were raping the women. That's why Sicilians don't like rape. It's in their DNA. Like, they, the whole... Their whole thing does not like the word. They don't like it. And they uh, they called it the Night of the Vespers, 14-something. It was a long time ago when the Moors were in Sicily. And they got up and they cut their dicks and put them in their fucking mouths. That's a true story. Wow. Wikipedia it. Wow. And they would tell me those. You know, later on, years later, I found it and was like, oh, my God, I remember them telling me about this. When I was a kid, I worked for the Severinos, and they used to build sidewalks and shit. No mafia. They were just straight-up Italian family. The guy was 60 when I knew him, and he's still 60. He's one of those Italian. Yeah. But he had the best diet I ever saw in my life. He would have the, the Tupperware, even then in the 70s, and he'd have like a suitcase with like six or seven Tupperwares. And for breakfast, he'd come, we'd work a little bit, and he'd open up, and he'd have like a, one egg with one piece of toast and butter and one piece of bacon, like a tomato. He would eat the tomato. Then at 10, he had like a, a little piece of lasagna. Then at lunchtime, he had wine with, like, uh, a piece of cheese, you know, and then... It sounds at, so simple. It's yeah? simple. And then at two, he'd eat an apple. And then at four, he'd have another little piece of cheese, and his wife would pour wine into a thing and put saran wrap over it so it wouldn't leak if it were tipped over. And he would drink the wine at four o'clock with one ice cube in it that he got from whosever house he was working at. His diet was so... And when I go home now, I haven't seen him in like 10 years. They could be dead, but the last time I saw him, he looked exactly the same. I never forgot that diet. Now, like lately, I've been doing it, just eating smaller meals more. Yeah. Like sometimes you just take two pieces of lasagna, and it's good enough. That's yeah. it. If you got good fucking lasagna, you take three bites of it. That's all you need. You're yeah. fucking good. You're good to go on the run. What's up, Lee? Nothing. Just high as fuck now. How, how, how do you guys know each other? We met online. Is that right? We met online and started the podcast about four years ago. We did a documentary together. What do you mean, met online? We, we were dating. Match.com. <laughs> Jews meet online and shit. And, uh, no, he hit me up on Facebook and asked me if I needed any help. And at the time, I was thinking of quitting Sebastian. In 2007, like, eight. I was like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to go on the road no more. I'm just going to do spots around town. I'll do a movie, TV shows. I get a job selling cars right there on Lancashire. You were going to get out of the business. I was going to stop touring. Like, I wasn't going to do comedy no more. Like, I, I didn't want to work Sun Wednesday through Sunday. I did all that. For years, I did that. I'm done. They want to give you 1500 bucks and get your own plane ticket. I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that at all. And, and all of a sudden, I started doing a podcast with Felicia. And in the process, I met Lee. And we started doing stupid videos, and we uh, did a documentary about my hometown, and then we started doing this podcast, and we're up to about 300 episodes, right? Yeah, with live podcasts, we're over 300. Yeah, yeah so. Yeah, it's amazing, this podcast, how they've just just taken off. Everybody's got, how do you feel about everybody having a podcast? Is this something that... Uh, it doesn't bother me at all. Everybody has a voice. There's a spot for everybody. Yeah. You know, there's a spot for everybody. Yeah. Uh, you have to work a little harder. You know, you have to do good at what you do, and you have to uh, get good guests in your outlook, and you just keep believing, and you get up every morning and you do it. You yeah. know, I couldn't imagine not having one now. I couldn't imagine not having one. You know, I'll do a podcast that we have three listeners. I have three listeners. I'll look at Lee and say, Lee, what the fuck are we doing with our lives? It's yeah. time to blow this up. <laughs> it gave the comedian a different angle, Sebastian. It gave you a chance to talk about your parents and the yeah. neighborhood you came from and uh, how you were raised and what you thought, which you're doing already. This just, and it makes people connect with you in a different way. Yeah. You know, you do a movie, you do an Adam Sandler movie. Yeah, Sebastian was great, he was great. And then you come on stage and it's great. When you do this, they get to understand. This. They want to know. They yeah. want to know little quirks. And you can't blame them. No. You know, uh, it's a society where you fucking need more. You know, you want more. You don't have a podcast no more? Oh, yeah, we do it uh, every Friday. You uh, and comes, uh, me and Pete Coriel. Pete Coriel. Yeah. I know it was a Pete. I didn't know who. Uh, yeah. 
And it's more like storytelling. It's it's basically, it would be like uh, getting on the phone with your buddy and saying, uh, what'd you do this week? And then, boom, we just share stories about what happened. And uh, we got a little listenership. It's called the Pete and Sebastian Show. And uh, it's just two guys kind of sharing stories about the, their lives, their wives, being on the road. How do you know Pete? I know Pete through uh, a tour that we did through the Just for Last Comedy Festival in Toronto. And talk about not liking people. I'm not the guy that... Uh, like I say, I, I I do a tour with four or five comedians. I'm not the guy that's like talking in the van. I'm the guy that's silent and listening. Of who you know, like who's annoying me or who's who do I want to hang with? What guy am I gonna kind of? And me and Pete, boom, right away. It was like uh, we were buddies for our whole life. We started talking. He ended up moving out to Los Angeles, and I said, hey, "You want to do like a a podcast? You want to start something up?" and we started it. He moved back to New York, so now we do it over Skype. So it's uh, it's good. It's another outlet. It's long stories that we probably wouldn't get to share on stage because you know on stage you got to keep the laughs coming. And some of the stuff that we talk about on our podcast, it takes you know seven eight minutes to really get going. Yeah, to get going. So it's allowed us to to share stories that we particularly wouldn't share on stage uh, to an audience that is, is, is a different audience. I mean, uh, the podcast audience I know noticed is, is different than the people that kind of like my, my comedy. There's a lot of people that, that, that come to my shows don't even know I have a podcast. You know, I mean, it's just, it's like these two separate groups of people. Like, hey, man, listen to the cat. It's almost like a secret society, at least ours is, where they come up to you after the show and they go, uh, listen to the cast you know like it's like a secret so uh yeah it's been good it's been good for us and uh i enjoy i, I don't go on too many too many other podcasts i, I, I just because a I, I travel a lot and b uh you know there's i don't hang around with a lot of comedians i don't, I don't know a lot of comedians to be honest with you i don't have a, like a you know a, what's at the store you know dove you know me you know rogan you yeah know wheels you know what's at the store you're like me i don't I can't go to all those places. Uh, how does it feel to be where you're at now, bro? Like to walk into a, because this is a fucked up question, but let's fucking answer it, mm -hmm. right? Because it happens to me. To walk into an improv, and there's a picture of you. Did you ever think in, in the beginning when you got here that oh, any of this would be possible when you were at the store sitting there, quiet, I mean? Uh, I, you know, I, I always dream, dreamt big. I always, in my head, was like, uh, this is not going to happen overnight, number one. Number two, um, you know, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while. And, and, and to be honest with you, I, I would walk in and I would look at the, the pictures on the wall and go, wow, you know, what, not if, but when, when am I going to be up there? What, when am I going to be big enough or they're going to even consider me to be up on the wall? But when you see it, and then you're next to like a, a, a comedian who's super successful, it's it's yeah, it makes you feel proud, you know. I mean, uh, it's 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 nice. It's nice to see. It's nice to have the recognition. Going from a a comedian who you know no one really you know you go in these rooms, you did the fifteen hundred dollar, thousand dollar a week. And no, nobody knew who you were. Nobody knew you were just doing comedy for the people that said, "Let's go watch some comedy tonight." And then you walk in now, and the people are there to actually see you because they really enjoy your work, which, you know, could be good and, and, and bad. Sometimes I feel like I wish sometimes no one knew who I was just for a challenge for myself to see if I could make a group of people kind of get on board with my point of view and they're discovering it as it's happening because right now when they come to see they know okay this is the guy who who's got a strong opinion about people and so that so they're they're ready for it but i don't know don't you like to go into a room sometimes and uh and perform for for a group that might not know what, you, what you're what absolutely. you're about absolutely uh you know the same thing is happening here with the podcast people come out and listen to the podcast they expect to hear certain things they want you you know, people come on Thursday and they're like, uh, great show tonight, we'll be back on Saturday. And I'm like, God damn it, I gotta switch it around now. <laughs> In my head, I gotta fucking switch it around. Yeah. And, but listen, man, this is why we got into this. Yeah. You know, to, I love the struggling part of it. I say it all the time. I love doing stand-up, except when money's involved. Stand-up is so much fun when you just go do a spot and you don't really, once money gets involved, <sighs> yeah. <sighs> 
really? You know, I need this shit now, you know? That's why I like the story. You go there and you don't know who's going to be in the audience. It could be people from Australia. It could be whatever. Please. No, I like I like when you... Uh, I, absolutely. I, I love going to play. I can't still believe I love performing. I never thought at this age I'd be on the road. I love it. I love what's happening now with the social media. I like that you meet them on Twitter. You communicate with them on Twitter. And now I see you live and we take a picture. So the whole circle came, you know. I've been giving you free content. Now you give me 20 bucks. You come to the show, you have a few drinks. Yeah. You know, the way I put it in my head now is uh, the album. When I was a kid, I knew what it was. I say, Sebastian, what are you doing tonight? Nothing. My mom's going out, dog. I got the new Richard Pryor album. Give me five bucks. Let's get a nickel bag. Let's get a bottle of vodka. It's the same thing, yeah. only in a bigger thing. Yeah. And what was the movie? Any given Sunday when Pacino pulls over Jamie Foxx, he goes, listen, bro, it's 5 o'clock. You're about to go in for dinner. You got one play left. What do you tell your homie? Go to the car and turn left. Go to the car. That's what you're doing. It's the yeah. same thing. Sometimes the most fun I have is when I'm walking up to the comedy store and I'm walking up the stairs, and as I hit the stair, I go, this doesn't matter. I'm at Hashway's Deli. I grew up at Hashway's Deli. And you went, you know, my role at Hashway's Deli was to come in, Get the roast beef sandwich on rye with mayonnaise, lettuce, tomato, light, and the salt and pepper. Let me get a bag of wise potato chips. And when I walk in, there'd be six guys talking about the events in the neighborhood. Did you hear about fucking Sebastian? Did you hear about Lee? And I'd sit there and observe and eat my fucking sandwich. And after I ate half the sandwich, that's the comedy store. Yeah. I, what, what the fuck are you guys talking? What the fuck are you talking about the Yankees? The Yankees don't have a chance. You bet the Yankees, you're in no danger of winning. You might as well pay them right now. I'd start an argument at the fucking place. Yeah. I'd take it back to being at Hashways. And that's when I have my best sets. In my mind, I'm not even on this fucking thing. I'm not even in front of fucking 300 people. I'm in front of six guys in the deli. I'm spitting food because the lettuce is coming out of my mouth while I'm telling these guys to suck my dick about basketball, whatever kind, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. try to take it to that uh, minuscule of a situation to get the best out of me, you know? But when you go up on the, on the Comedy Store stage, do you know or do you, because it looks like you're just literally flying off the cuff. Tuesday but, nights I have to, Sebastian. No, I, I, I you, have you, to. You have no idea. No idea. Sometimes you, you, you don't I, even think about it. Yes and no. I can't lie to you. Yes and no. But then I get down there and you say something on stage. You just gave me the green light. The shit I was worrying about, why would I even worry about it? I'm going to go behind fucking you. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's what the comedy store is for for me on Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. I don't have to stick to that fucking pathetic material. I could go, go up there and talk about the drive, talk about Priuses and how I hate those motherfuckers doing 40 in the right-hand line. You know, yeah. it's just something that you observe today. Yeah. You know, that that's it. That's what I like. That's what Tuesdays was for us years ago. But now you go to the comedy store on a Tuesday and there's 160 people there <laughs> clapping for you like they know who the fuck you are. And you're like, damn it. I wanted to do the joke about the one-legged hooker from 19. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. The comedy store has become a place where I can't do, you know, that 1245 spot when we first got there. Oh, and you had to follow Paul Mooney, Sebastian. Yeah. And you, Sebastian, anybody with common sense, you're not going to go up there and, well, oh, something funny happened to me today. And after the third joke, you're going to die. 1245 so you know what take that set list and rip it up and go up there and work them cut the crowd in half get this side alive once you get them going cut it in half again get this side alive and then they meet and now you got them now Jeff's on the piano Maj Jabrani fuck the yams you're out there <laughs> fucking yelling and now you turn nothing the comedy store at 1245 that's four years of that they're not gonna stop you that's why people, they're not going <laughs> to stop you because I've seen adversity. It's been staring at me. They just followed Paul Mooney at 1245. You were there. Who We had to follow Eddie, yeah. Paul, and Andrew. Yeah. That was three nights a week, dog. And then you had to follow the mediums, Don Marrera. Don Marrera was my killer. Every time I look at the dine-up and Don Marrera was there, God damn it, especially in the main room. And for me, it was him and A.J. Jamal. Who was it for you? Who used to shut your lights out before you got on stage? Oh, man? God. Well, I mean, it's funny. I used to wait tables and at the, at at the, the Four Seasons Hotel. And, and Eddie Griffin used to uh, literally come in, drink at the Four Seasons Hotel. And then he used, to go to the, he used to go to the comedy store, do his hour or whatever, and then bring me up not knowing I was his waiter. Like he said, please welcome. I said, bang, and I'd come up and 
And then, and at that at that time, I was such a young comedian. I didn't want to say, I didn't want to say the truth that I just waited on Eddie Griffin uh, at the Four Seasons all hours, and he don't even know who the hell I am as he's bringing me up. He didn't, he it, finally Dice Clay said, Eddie, do you know that's the guy that's waiting on you? And he goes, Nah, yeah. And then uh, and then we kind of had a, like a, a little banter back at the Four Seasons where where he used to come in. But yeah, I mean going going there, I I, I didn't even. I, I would wait. I'd get there at nine if I wasn't even on the list as a fallout. And I'd sit in the back. And I'd just wait for five hours if I had to to get that last spot. So it was dice for me when I had to follow dice. It was because, you know, it was more of a similar look and whatnot. I'm like, oh man, what am I going to do here? He's going up there. He's talking about, you know, pussy, cunt, this and that. And I'm, what am I going to talk about? Ross? dress for less you know it's like where's the transition here so it took uh, it took but it, it made me better you know how surreal was it that you're going up behind dice uh, do you have any idea lee <laughs> do you have any fucking idea lee no you have any idea i didn't talk to the man for the first year the reason why i'm up on that stage is because halfway house when i got out of prison the halfway house for new year's they locked us down and i brought the end everybody brought films Oh, let's watch this. And I brought Andrew Dice Clay. That beat everything. That was like the full, what is it called? A full house? Yeah. Like they had like Batman rules and this. And then I was like, huh, Dice Man rules. Put it on. And my head almost blew up. So you didn't talk to him for a year? A year until I got to the store. Until an argument arose one night. Between you and him? No, between him and Scott Day. Were you there for Scott Day? Who's Scott Day? Scott Day was the original talent coordinator. And what oh, happened no, was no. way before you came in, it was Luca and Marino. I just told the story. We'll tell us, then we'll do the shots, and we'll get you out of here. Okay. Uh, Luca and Marino. Dice came in one night, and Luca's on stage lighting the cigarette with the lighter in his jacket, saying he's the hitman for the Gambinos. And then fucking, I could see Dice in the back going. And then Mike Marino went out, and he saw Mike Marino. And the next day, he called Scott Day. Scott Day was hired by who's the guy in Vegas, the chubby comic that had uh, Louis Anderson. Louis Anderson recommended him. He's a, Scott Day was a good guy. Scott Day was a fucking Mananuska, though. He could fucking put him down, dog. He'd give me five spots a week. I'd bring him a bottle of tequila it's, at, it's, at 1 o'clock on a Tuesday. You know how your spots come out for the week on yeah, Wednesday? In those yeah, days, yeah. your spot. Wednesday. On Wednesday, I'd call at 2, and there'd be an all day. Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, main room, Saturday, original room. Mitzi took care of me. And I would stop and get him a bottle of tequila and bring it over there at 5 o'clock. I mean, a bottle. Guys, not a pint, not a half a pint, a bottle. And I bring it to him and say, thank you, Scott. He put in this fucking drawer. And by 10 o'clock when I'd be at the store, he was out of it. And he'd be walking, guys. None of this shit. Oh, how you doing? What's up, dog? Let's go get a drink. Scott, what'd you do with that bottle? It's gone. <laughs> shit. <laughs> and he was walking. He hated Rogan. He thought oh, really? Rogan was a book of bully. Really? But one night, Dice called him and said, you're not going fucking home. We're going to take care of this. You got two fucking Dice impersonators up there. That's how I became friends with Dice. I was out there. It was 1130, and he was arguing with Scott Day. He's telling him that they're gone. Don't make me go over your head. They're gone. You understand me? You can't be up there doing Dice. And I stopped, and I go, listen, you don't know me, bro. I love you. I do this because of you. They're not doing you. They don't have a voice yet. So they're doing their favorite comic. When yeah. they get a voice... This will all be over. Yeah, but you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. And I walked away. I didn't argue with him. He called me. He's a man. Three days later, he goes, I thought about what you said. Thank you. You're right. It's a form of flattery. Yeah. And that's it. We hit it off after that. So that's how I knew he was a good guy. You know, yeah. he meant well. You know. Yeah. You went on the road with him for a while. I went uh, two and a half years, uh, three years almost. We went and did... Uh, Indian casinos. We did uh, Vegas Stardust. He's the, you know, uh, hanging out in the parking lot of the comedy store. He came up to me and goes, uh, "What are you doing? You know, like, what are you doing uh, this week?" I said, "No, I'm working at the Four Seasons." Well, how would you like to work Vegas with me? And I go, "Yeah, let me get off." So uh, we go to the Stardust Wayne Newton Casino, uh, Wayne Newton Theater at the Stardust Hotel. Here I am. What year is this? This is 2003. Wow. So four years in, takes me, uh, you know, and I go up and I'm 
I'm, I'm playing. You know, my parents come out from Chicago. My mother's like, you, you made it. Shut it down. It's over. You, you, yeah, I, I played Wade Newton Theater. She's like, it's over. You, you, you did what you had to do, you know. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, just performing with him. Here, you, you go to, in my head, you're going to Las Vegas with Andrew Dice Clay. And I don't know Dice from nothing. I just know him from the comedy store. He's another guy that it was hard to get to know. You know. Did you know who Dice was when oh, you left yeah. Chicago? Okay. Yeah, I, I grew up oh, on Dice. Okay, okay. So, I but know. I don't know the guy personally. I, just, I feel very intimidated. I feel like he might fight me at any minute. It was just one of these guys that... Go to the nightclubs. It's gonna be great. So we get to Vegas, and Dice is like, um, "We're gonna go do uh, some furniture shopping." I go, "What?" Yeah. Let's go to a nightclub. We go a nightclub. No. I got a house. I ain't no. I got kids. You know, so in my head, I was thinking it was going to be this big thing. But here we are. I'm laying on $15,000 couches. And he going, is that one good? I go, Dice, I got a chair in my apartment right now. Anything I lay on is going to be fantastic. So, um, yeah, we, we had a good time. He taught me a lot about comedy. A ton about it's comedy. It's amazing. It's amazing the education you get. Oh, just sitting in the rooms uh, late, late night after a show, just... Don't worry about what other people are doing. He told me, "Don't, don't. Uh, you're gonna get your shot. You can't compare your road to anybody else's. No, no, Somebody no. gets a TV show, great for great them. Great for them. Uh, you're gonna get it. You don't know when it's gonna come. You don't know how it's gonna come, but it's gonna come. So just the only thing you got control of is your stand-up. Keep writing, keep doing your stand-up, and let everything else just go by the wayside and that's kind of how i i did it and you know you just uh but yeah it was it was good it was a it was a good learning experience especially for a young comedian coming up and it's nice nice to have a guy like that take someone like me and and pull him up with him you know what i'm saying and 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 i try to do that too with some of the guys that i work with is give them a shot i do it too you have to you have to you have to give back so let me give some shout outs and we'll close up with something we'll get the fuck out of here the glasses are coming out yeah, yeah, it's all over. I want to give a shout out to my brothers over at Flat Rock Assembly, you bad motherfuckers, working the third, second, and fourth, and fifth shift. They came to the show and gave us shirts at the home of the Mustang. Nice. They're where they make the fucking Mustang. So if you're driving a Mustang, it's made by Flat Motherfucking Rock Assembly. You're a bunch of savages. God bless you. Thank you for keeping it fucking together with this American tradition, you bad motherfuckers. Graham Tiefler, Villain J, Anita D for short. Dead Squad, Motherfucker, M-U-F-C, Alan Bursell, Kevin Mueller, Andre Silva, and Constantine Rain. I love you guys. Thank you for being family all the time. The other day I was driving, man, and, uh, you know, my influences were Pryor and Dice and Lenny Bruce and, you know, Lenny Clark. And there's so many guys you like. I like Seinfeld on the Rodney Dangerfield special. And, you know, you think of how lucky we've been that people have reached out and said hello and put us in things and mm-hmm. uh, you on the Wild West tour you got yeah. to do that with those guys and uh, you think of how great it's been and then you think about like uh, I was thinking about a person like Joe Rogan man how I've learned so much comedy wise like mm-hmm. my traveling like you know the the inclusion that people think that we're on the road party and I was on the road party and as a feature act as a feature act, I'm not with you. I'm there till six in the morning, snorting blow. We'll eat some chick's ass. We'll take pictures. I'm there with you. But once this, I, I always knew that I was only going to get one shot at this. Yeah. I don't want to blow this. I didn't want to blow this. I don't know what a nightclub is, Sebastian. Nor do I want to know. When I was doing drugs, I didn't like nightclubs. Mm-hmm. I can't, I'm snorting coke. I want my dick sucked. We go in there with bad breath. Hey, what are you doing? No, no, no. It's not going to work out. I... I it was a different, uh, I've never been a nightclub guy. Or a, although we did see each other at the strip club in Chicago that time, did we not? Did was we? Was it your cousin, your brother? Do you remember I was I, working Riddles, and I went to a strip club with uh, the owner of Riddles, and one of your tribe, your cousin, your brother, came up to me. 
Was it's, it my cousin? I, I yeah, long time. Oh, my God. That was... Now, you worked Riddles. Yeah. Yeah, you worked Riddles. After. That was my bread and butter for years. That was yeah. a great fucking room. That was... Love that room. That was... That's that's comedy. You know what I'm saying? Brad, they didn't care. Brad, Brad did that? Brad, the son? Then they opened up one up in... Uh, right, but uh, it was the guy, Ken. Ken was the guy I started with. Oh, maybe it was a different thousand dollars for four shows, but then the son, the nephew, took it over. Oh, okay, yeah. That's and he started bouncing checks. I remember taking they had a fucking midway flight from Burbank. <sighs> <laughs> On a Friday it left at like six oh five. That got you into Chicago at like ten something. You were at that fucking Chinese place on Harlem. On, you know, at 11, 11, 10, you were at a Chinese place in Harlem on the, what is, that's the name of the street, yeah, Harlem in Chicago, Har- Harlem Avenue, eating fucking shrimp and lobster sauce and this fucking pork fried rice, tremendous. They had a direct flight, Lee, a direct flight from, they had like two of them that would go right from there to Midway. They cut those out after fucking 9-11, <laughs> motherfuckers. I loved it. See, when my family first came here, they went to Chicago. My Cuban, my mom and dad, my real dad, went to Chicago. Oh, yeah? But something happened. Their action was in New York. So they went to New York, and they left a lady that were friends with in Chicago, and they came back and got her. But my mom always talked about Chicago. I think she was in Chicago on the Valentine's Day massacre. She wow. always talked about that. Yeah, she was in Chicago. That's how long. Her roots were in Chicago, too, but they ended up in fucking New York City. So one of the success signs for me was to work Chicago. Like once you work on the road, Chicago, Boston, there's some places you have to work before you have to start talking shit. What? What? I worked Boston last week, bitch. I don't know. You better check it. You better check out my IMDb page and shit. <laughs> well, what is it like to play Vegas? Because I know from podcasts, Vegas gets like a lot of shit sometimes from comedians when they have to be there all week. But like Paula went to Vegas, I think, a few months ago, and they already had billboards up for next week at, at – uh, South Point. Like, that must be pretty cool. Vegas has to be, like, one of the coolest places to play. Between me and you on paper, it is. After the first t- two times, you're like... Like, I, I went into Vegas to catch a rising star. So it was a week at the whatever hotel. Yeah. But after three days, there's a bunch of kids hitting you with swords. You never planned this in your list of gold sheets. <laughs> what was the, What's that hotel? That Luxor. Yeah. Catch a rising star used yeah. to be at the Luxor. Used to be fucking Monday through Sunday. Two shows a fucking night, okay? So by Wednesday, you're already sick to your stomach. You're eating in the employee lounge. You're eating bread that's got teeth marks in it. You know, like, that's why you got to rip that bread at the buffet. Rip that motherfucker. (laughs) Don't ever let that motherfucker there, because don't put it right back in the line with your little pubic hair from your mustache and shit. We were eating that stuff. The first time I worked the rib, Sharippa was so shitty to me. He was so shitty to me. I worked that Friday, Saturday up in the roof, the dirty show, yeah. and they give you a card for the employee lounge. But it was like the worst card you could have. Like they wouldn't even give you all the benefits down there. It was like old fucking food, man. Vegas, listen, man, everything, I don't know. I see it differently now. I, 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 I go on the road to talk to the people from this podcast now and make the connection from yeah. social media. And that keeps me alert. If I didn't have that, I couldn't do the road. Mm. I couldn't be one of those guys that goes out every week with no end. This has no end. Yeah. This is what you're going to do till you're 58. Then you have no insurance. I always wanted for this to be more for me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I didn't want to depend on the road uh, that much. You know, I, I, I see the value, but I don't sometimes. Like, I like staying at home. I, yeah. I got shit to do at the fucking house, you know? Oh, no, there's a life at home. You there's know what I mean? You got to live your life. Like too. what you said, you go out to dinner with the wife. That's what you spend your gears on. Yeah, you just got to live. You got you have to live your life in order to produce comedy. Uh, at least for me, I, I I have to go out there. I have to do things that uh, people do. You can't live and breathe this comedy. Uh, stand up and keep working and this. And that. You got to go on vacation. You got to do this. You got to do that to draw material from, and it's healthy. Right, and uh, and I like what you said about going out and meeting these people that listen to the to the cast because, you know, uh, I love the meet and greets. I, I love them. I, I love them. You know, a, lot of, what, a lot of people don't like the meet and greets. But greet. again, I tell people up front, and I tell them on the stage, listen, do me a favor. If you forgot to put the other on, don't hug me, because then you leave armpit on my arm, and then people hug me later, and they think it's my armpit. <laughs> then they leave, then going, we like Joey Diaz, but he had a little wang to him, and then you smell that armpit for the second show. You know what I'm saying? You could smell that sweat. So when yeah. you come to my shows, I tell everybody they got to bathe. 
That's I want good, everybody to shower. It's a pre -gra 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 I don't ask for much. You got to bathe because I love hugging people. I love, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if I hug you and I get that fucking armpit on my arm, I got to go on stage smelling that fucking armpit. It's death. It's Lee, terrible. it's death. That's terrible. So that's all I fucking ask. Sebastian, uh, the, the, the biggest thrill for me going back to the store, I got to be honest with you, Sebastian, was you. It really... Listen, when you walk into the comedy store, you, your game rises. People have mm -hmm. Ha Ha's great. The improv is great. The Laugh Factory is fucking great. They all serve their purpose. Flappers with the Christians. <laughs> but when you walk into the comedy store, you're walking into Wrigley Field. Okay? Yeah. To me, and this is in my eyes, this is how I put it now at my age and how long I've been doing comedy. You know how fortunate I am to be 52 and still get spots? I'm there 1045 tonight. You know how fucking gratitude I feel? Because mm -hmm. I know I was there for years, and I'd see 52-year-old Spanky sitting out there every night, and the other guy that would get coke from Chewy and complain how Rodney got him out of the business. I didn't want to be that guy. Yeah, I did yeah. not want to be that guy. So for me, every time I walk into the comedy store, Sebastian, I know I'm in Wrigley. I know. I, I didn't play baseball. But if I did, that's Wrigley. That's Fenway. Park. Fenway. That's Yankee Stadium. Every night, I got a new stadium I go to. Mm -hmm. I go to Waterfront Stadium. I go to Three Whatever, Three Rivers in Cincinnati. This is it. This is as good as you ever be. Walking in there, the, the fear you get. When I walk in there and Sebastian's killing, you get that little fear. That fear, that's it. That's what you want. When yeah. I was going to the ha-ha to close, I didn't get that fear. I didn't get that. You get that little fear. There's a little twist. Yeah. Fucking Sebastian. Cocksucker. <laughs> and you walk away, you motherfucker. And then you go up there and you kill because that's the league. That's your heart. That's everything. Dog, how lucky are we that we're still there 15, 16 years later? It's unbelievable. Are you fucking crazy? Are you fucking crazy, Lee? So every morning that I get up, uh, you know, I'm thankful. But to see where you were and where you came from, Sebastian, and where you are today, my God, it's a feather in my cap, bro. Thank because uh, I always pull for you. I always thought you were funny. I always thought there was something cooking in that fucking uh, guinea mind of yours. I knew there was something up there. I just didn't know what. It wasn't my business. Yeah. But I always knew that while they were doing, ha, 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 you were one of those guys that they're talking about this, and you're like, yeah, right, good. In your mind, you know, you have that gift that you saw right through the bullshit. That like you didn't suck nobody's dick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he didn't go upstairs in the green room and lick somebody's balls. Yeah. You know, there's people. How many fucking people did we see coming? Oh, yeah. It's a revolving door, man. And uh, and they had stories and management and agencies and writers. And Liza Minnelli came to see him. And they're fucking gone today. Yeah. Gone. And we're still in this game. So uh, you're the one of the... F I really want to join the show. Well, thanks I, I got to tell you, man. this is one of the happiest days. I went to jiu-jitsu. We were having a great time at 12. I told him I got to leave because I got to take a shower. I got to be clean for Sebastian. I was on time. <laughs> yeah, I had to go home and do the fucking antifungal, the asshole, and everything. Actually, Fred, I had that little bit of fungus on my toenail. Lamisil. It's a, it's a medication. It's an oral medication. Cleared it right up. For years, I would go to a pool and not take my shoes off because of this this like fungus I had on my, my toenail. I got them on both the big ones and the, the ones next to them. I went to the doctor and they lasered them with a blowtorch. <laughs> The little black Hindu lady with a fucking mask on. That's the thing where they fucking laser burn them off. You have no idea. So so do they grow back or they just completely, you have no toenail now? So no, I got a toenail. I got to cut it every fucking day. <laughs> Last week, I got an ingrown toenail, so I cut the middle of it so it grows into the middle. So My, you're doing your own like little surgeries at home with the... With the, with the I, I cut the toenails at the house. I put the toilet paper down. I put the, the, the paper towel. I put the big foot on there. I cut it and then I scrape it off together and I throw it away. So okay, I don't yeah. want my daughter stepping on my. Oh no! Yeah, it, it's it, disgusting. Right. Those nails, they're fucking black. They're fucking black. The toe is fucking black. Well, look good. at my boy Rob of Dubai, reporting direct from fucking Chan's Dragon, and my boy went to Jersey. Look at him. That's that, if you're ever in fucking bananas again, make sure you go to Chan's Dragon Inn. This is the best restaurant in the fucking country. Oh yeah, the best. The best. Richfield Park, New Jersey, since I'm 16. Nice. I'm 52 years. Wow. Let's see. Let's see. Just to show you, just to let you know that Uncle Joey ain't no fucking, I ain't no Johnny come lately. My just favorite. Keep... It's pictures of your child and Chinese food. That's it. Why? Oh, look at, look at that. That's Rudy's. 
The Galamar from oh, Greece. Oh, that's That's nice. dirty. I used to walk up there when I was 17, and they'd serve me that with Heineken on tap for 60 cents, Sebastian yeah. Maniscalco. How much this is here? How much? $28 in L.A. to get, to get a plate of calamari And like this that. is with the spicy. They have the sweet, medium, or the hot sauce, or you could... Or you could put the sweet and the medium together, and they put a piece of hard, the elbow, in the bottom Ooh. of the sauce, and when you take the sauce out. No, 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 no. This is 30 fucking years. That's Cuban boliche. That's a Greek place. That's strawberry short. <laughs> Look at that egg roll. Look at those spare ribs. That's Chance dragging it. Look at those spare ribs. Not one defective one. <laughs> Nothing. They got those porks in the back. <laughs> I'm telling you. That looks delicious. I'm telling you. I'm starving. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's nowhere to fucking go. There's a Puerto Rican joint across the street. On it! For optimal optimization of your body and your fucking mind. You understand me? Why are you bullshitting yourself? You're trying to get in shape. You're trying to be the best you could fucking be. I was stuck at the airport Sunday from 6.45 a.m. I didn't get to Los Angeles till 2.40 in the fucking morning. Did oh, you know that? No. The, the Dallas, the hurricanes oh, fucked yeah. the whole country up. And I took that fucking 180 U-turn. I couldn't fall asleep the first night. It took care of the fucking uh, jet lag, the whole thing. Done, gone. It's Tuesday. I feel like a new fucking what man. What is it? On it. On it is a, the, the, a company, a vitamin, a, a supplement. What company. does it do? They have 180 is what you take when you fly. And it knocks you out? Knock, no, it takes the jet lag away. Gives oh, you yeah, vitamins before you fly. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what, man? You're at the store next week. I'll get some because he's in town. It comes in little boxes and you just rip it and put it in your water. Bam! No I've saved lag. them. No jet lag. I feel like, listen, bro, you know what it's like to be in an airport from 645 Eastern time? Oh, That's 345 L.A. time, ladies and gentlemen. I almost, it almost took me 24 hours to get to fucking Los Angeles. And I went home and I drank, fuck, I ate two chicken cutlets. I drank some fucking water. I watched TV for like an hour and I took the thing. And I'll tell you what, I laid in bed. My mind was still going and I could feel like the jet lag. I got up at 9.30 yesterday. I lifted weights. I, I deadlifted. I need that. You need that. Gotta, when we fly, you got to take care. You got to drink the water. Big problem with jet lag. So. Yeah, the 180 is fucking tremendous, man. So please, go to honor.com right now and throw in. What do you put in the box? Church. Church. C-H-U-R-C-H. And get 10% off your first order. Anything you want with them. The Shroom Tech fucking sport. Again, I went to jiu-jitsu today. I was rolling around with Dave. The only reason why I stopped was because I had to come meet him on time. If not... I would have stayed till 12.15, 12.20. I love this shit. It's good for, it's a quadricep mushrooms and they give you energy. Not bad. Mm. You want to jump in, up and down, you want to take the scooter up into the mountains. <laughs> You're sitting there with those rotten fucking underwears. For how long, you nasty motherfucker? Meundies.com, the best underwear in the fucking game right now. I wore mine to jiu-jitsu today. I told you people what I like about it. Your nuts never fall out of the white part. You know when you wear those tidy whities, yeah, your yeah. nut always pops out. I don't like that shit. I got that one nut exposed. I don't need that aggravation in my life. With the tidy white, with the MeUndies, it controls them. And the cotton, it alleviates the, the sweat. It pulls the sweat from your body, Sebastian, so your nuts stay magnifique. Perfect. You know what I'm saying? Perfect. Perfect. Go to MeUndies.com right now. they got a great selection of men and women's underwear, sweatpants, T-shirts. They got it all, motherfuckers. Go to MeUndies.com right now and get 20% off your first order and free delivery. But you got to press Joey in the box. J-O-E-Y, cocksuckers. Right there, get 20% off and free shipping. And you're sitting there going, Joey, what the fuck? In the it U.S. and Canada. In the U.S. and Canada. And it don't stop there, motherfucker. You know why? Because Nature Box is coming at you gratis, gratis, nutritious, healthy snacks, fucking uh, nutritionist approved, delivered right to your door. Right there. I'm going to give you three little bags and two big bags. You can mix them up. The cocoa almonds, the fucking French toast. They got, listen. They put new shit out so much, I'm out of contact with what they even got anymore. But all I know is it's nutritious, it's fucking delicious. When you're stoned to the gills and you're eating those little bags, your mind's going to blow up. Whatever it's the figs, the fucking the plantain chips, everything they got is good. And I'm giving you a starter box for free, gratis. It's like a $30 value on the arm. The only thing that's going to cost you is for shipping, like two fucking bucks. Right? Not Lee? even, like one ninety. One ninety. So go to naturebox.com right now and press in. Joey. Boom! J-O-E-Y. Get a free fucking box. Three little bags, two big bags delivered to your door right now, today. It ain't going to come today, but if you do it today, <laughs> you'll get about a fucking weekend. And you can uh, next weekend, when everybody else is eating potato chips at those barbecues, there you are with Nature Box living like a fucking doctor. You know what it costs you? Ugats. Tell them, Sebastian. Who nothing, gots? Who nothing gots? bitches. Zero. Grabs. Zero. Dollar ninety. Nothing. A dollar ninety, cocksuckers. And then you're sitting there going, but Joey, what am I gonna watch? If I got vitamins, I got nature box, 
and I got fucking me underwear on. What am I going to watch? Iron Dragon fucking TV, motherfuckers. The ultimate leader in classic martial art films, okay? All the names. Drop the names on them, Lee. Jackie Chan. Who else? They got the Ip Man series. They got the fat... Tai Chi Hero. After the Fat Dragon. I mean, they got titles you never even heard of. On it videos. But you're sitting there watching shitty fucking movies. You you love classic martial arts. You want to learn Kung Fu. You want to fly through the fucking air. You want to be hip. What are you sitting there like a mutt for? Go to Iron Dragon TV and press in... Joey. Boom! And you get two free fucking movies. Today, this week, starting this weekend. So I'm going to give you on it. You're going to get 10% off. I'm going to give you me on these. You're going to get 20% off and free shipping. I'm also throwing Nature Box on you, which is fucking gratis like a motherfucker. And irondragontv.com, two free movies. So if you can't take that, if you can't take a joke, take a shuttle, bitches. I'm always trying to give you cocksuckers love. I want to thank one of the best stand-ups in the game for coming in here today. Thank you for making me. I mean, it's just like you're my nephew. Like, and now I see you, and you're like, look at this motherfucker knocking these cocksuckers out. Well, thank you for having so me. So, thank on the you. Show, What's your Larry? podcast, man? It's Pete and Sebastian Show. Get on Stitcher, iTunes. It's uh, my website, SebastianLive.com, and you can find my dates there as well. Where so, are you this weekend? Home? I'm home, and then after that, I am in Las Vegas at the Venetian Hotel and Resort. At, when is this? Uh, Memorial Day weekend. Me too. Oh, yeah? You're there? We're all there. Rogue, everybody. Rogan's Friday night. I'm at the South Point. You're at the Venetian. Who else is there? Perfect. Uh, just How many uh, shows you got a night? Two. Just two, two in one night. So, oh, so you only got one night? There? One night, Sunday night. Oh, uh, so you only have Sunday night. Uh, come in Saturday, perform Sunday, I leave Monday. So if, well, if you uh, want to go to the UFC, let me know. Maybe okay. I'll get Joe to give you a ticket. What, you, what are you, uh, Saturday's UFC? I'm there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but the UFC is Sunday, Saturday night. Saturday so night. So if you get in there early, maybe we'll you get your fucking ticket, man. Sounds Sebastian, good. all the luck in Thanks, the world. Thanks, brother. I hope appreciate it. All it. Works out. Lee, what's up with you, cocksucker? Just going to Vegas with you. It's gonna be you coming. ain't coming. I cut you off. That's it. I got your hotel over at the Hotel Six. <laughs> Next to some dead fucking crack hole for twenty nine ninety five. Good, okay. you're coming. I'm very happy. And you, what do you got this weekend? Anything? Uh, just no, just a couple of pitches from what we talked about last you night. You doing any podcast seminars this weekend yet? Not yet. No, we'll but get maybe shit together. Cocksucker. Maybe in Toronto. I just found out. May, may, maybe in Toronto. You better get it together with your little blue shirt on. Let me see. Show Sebastian the crab. How you been lifting weights lately? I don't got the crab. But Show him the crab. He makes me do Show this. Show him the crab. Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah, like a s- tight, tight fucking I Ali wish. Molly. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. You Lee Sayad, I love you, Cucksucker. Thank, Thank you. Care. What do you want to end with, buddy? What are we going to end up? Don't tell me the weekend. Cause you, oh, how, about, uh, how about the fucking Almond Brothers whipping post? There you go. Not live. Studio. Okay. You sure don't want a cookie to take home? You want a, a, something for the dog? <laughs> no. <laughs> maybe, the, maybe the dog's got leukemia or something. I, I don't know if this is live or not, but we'll find out. I don't want live. I don't well, I don't know. I can't. Well, I have it. to do the ads. Well, let's see. We'll test it. Come on. We got to hurry up. That's it. Okay. Hit, right, it, so hit it. Do, do that, and then we'll put the ads later. Okay. Go ahead. Hit it. Look at this. Two hours to put the fucking song on. I'm trying to get it ready to take off for you, too. You said I got to live with?